Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Channel 23's The Faces of Carlsbad. And we're sponsored by Intrepid Potash, and we're coming to you again from this beautiful, full, this beautiful area at the Carlsbad Foundation. We want to thank Jim Harrison and his lovely secretary, Jan, for having us and putting up with us, and the whole staff here. They're so nice to us, but isn't it beautiful? You look around here and you say, this is the place to be. To relax and boy do we relax in fact uh, I'm so sleepy I could go to sleep right now. oh we've got a guest we've got to interview I want to apologize for that <laughs> I have that effect on a lot of people yes right dog no. our guest today ladies and gentlemen is Robert Brader and uh, Robert I want to welcome you to the show thank you for uh, having me it's I just met you just recently and no. it's you know we'd call this show the faces of Carlsbad where people will see people they've they know or they've never met before and they get to know them. And uh, this is a treat for me because I've met somebody I've never met before. And uh, it's so nice. I'm uh, new to Carlsbad. I've only been here about 15 years. 15 years. Where have you been hiding? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's terrific. Well, Robert, before we get started, uh, I told you before we went on the show uh, years and years ago, the first girl I really liked was in the fourth grade and her name was Brader also. And, we were trying to check to see if maybe you were related to her. May have been, you told me what your age was, may have been my uh, great-great-grandmother. Your great-great-grandmother, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah, well, anyway. But anyway, I noticed when you came in, all of our people that we interview are, are really neat and well-dressed, but I thought you were probably an officer in the United States Navy when you came in. You were so well uh, adorned here with clothing. I, do you dress like this all the time? Oh, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. I uh, dress like this for special occasions, going to court, and uh, speaking to celebrities like yourself. Oh, I'm, I'm I, very uh, honored. Mo you made my day. Guy Lemma will be so proud of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, most days my days are pretty hectic. Um, a uniform like this wouldn't stay clean very long. Um, I'm going to get back to this uniform and, and what you're doing, mm -hmm. but I want to go back into the early days so that our people who are watching have an idea of where your parents origi originally came from or your grandparents and uh, the early days of Robert Brader. Well, I, um, my uh, father was in the United States Army. I was an Army brat. Um, he and his family originated um, in the... Uh, St. Louis, Missouri area. Um, we have family in Missouri, Iowa, Ohio, when you get back in, way back into the relatives, but uh, we were kind of nomads. I was born at uh, Irwin Army Medical Center in Fort Riley, Kansas. Oh, yes. Um, shortly after that, we uh, moved to uh, Biggs Army Airfield in El Paso, Texas. And uh, as all my friends uh, left to travel with their parents to Germany and Italy and great places, uh, Seems like my father got to go to places like uh, Korea, and um, we moved from the great distance from uh, Biggs Army Airfield to Fort Bliss, Texas, which was uh, across town. Um, so most of my military traveling uh, landed me in El Paso, and uh, I grew up there, lived in El Paso for about 30 years. Uh, you weren't allowed to go with your dad to Korea, I take it? Uh, um, no. Well, no, he uh, did a couple tours over there. Mm -hmm. um, he was specialty in the military, was um, kind of limited. And uh, during uh, Vietnam and during those times and subsequent to that, um, he spent a lot of time at the DMZ and other places that uh, they didn't take dependents with them. That's the demilitarized zone. zone in yes. North Korea, South Korea, dividing the two Koreas. Correct. Uh, where did your mother uh, originate? Uh, my mother grew up in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. Mm -hmm. uh, met my father there. Um, her uh, family uh, go back to Ireland and Scotland before that, part of the great Murphy clan. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, her family's, uh, like ours, uh, kind of scattered to the wind. Um, I have uh, family in Australia that I chat with regularly on the internet and uh, kind of all over the world. Are these cousins of yours in Australia? Um, correct. I have an aunt there and I have several cousins there. So, uh, so where do they live, uh, basically? I'm um, familiar with the six uh, states of Australia. I'm uh, my uh, aunt is in um, southern Australia, in, in the place everybody refers to as the Outback. Oh, um, yes. The, um, 
I have uh, cousins in Perth. Um, I have cousins Ooh, in um, Western Melbourne. Western. Melbourne, Victoria. Um, so they're correct, kind of they're kind of a little scattered around, even amongst their own country. Have you ever had the opportunity to visit them? I have not. I uh, I had an invitation when I was young, and I was going to go when I slowed down a little bit, um, and kind of missed that opportunity. Grew up and got married and had kids, and uh, yeah. it's it's on my list of things to do. Oh, definitely. You you've got to. Uh, I, I read mystery books, and uh, one of the authors is uh, he. Oh, I cannot remember his name right now. That that happens, but uh, he writes about Australia. His Australian police uh, uh, chief is a uh, mixture of outback Aboriginal mm -hmm. and uh, a European, and they call him Inspector Napoleon Bonaparte, and a very very popular. Uh, Australian writer who wrote these and uh, passed away a number of years ago, but in Australia he's still well thought of. So I've, I've always been fascinated about Australia, so uh, maybe someday when you, uh, you're on your way to Australia, you'll see me sitting in a plane seat next to you and we can resume our chat again. Huh? Well, I'll make you a deal. You buy the plane tickets and I'll travel with you and we'll go next week. Oh, that sounds good. We can do that. <laughs> Okay, so Robert, uh, after your dad's military career, and uh, you were still in the El Paso area. Yeah, he uh, he retired from the military, went to work for Rockwell in the El Paso area. Mm -hmm. um, so I uh, grew up there, went through high school. Um, what high school did you graduate? I graduated from Burgess High School Burgess, on the mm -hmm. east side of El Paso, mm -hmm. and uh, they uh, my class just recently celebrated their thirtieth reunion. Wow. Um, didn't uh, didn't have the opportunity to go, but it was I was kind of amazed. Uh, some of those people are, have gotten old. So, you graduated in 1982. I graduated in 1982. You're a youngster. Why? Well, thank you. Oh I, my uh, goodness, yes. You know, I I graduated back in what was it, 1895, and guy guy is young younger. He he graduated in 1921. Yeah. Yeah. I we know. go back a long ways. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you, you came out west in the covered wagon together, I hear. Yes. Well, he didn't. Uh, I did. Uh, yeah, he, he came by one of those old uh, the stoked engines, you know, on the railroad. Mm -hmm. uh, not the diesels, but the old, the old, <laughs> the old steam, steam engines. engines. Yes. yes, he was shoveling coal, I think. That could be. Yeah. He told me he was a conductor and got all the tickets. So uh, maybe he was a, he might be telling a little fib. Oh, I heard he was a conductor, but I thought he was talking about an orchestra. <laughs> that could be it, too. Yes, he worked for Fred Waring uh, and the Pennsylvanians back there yeah. <laughs> in the old days, remember? <laughs> anyway, uh, Robert, after you got out of high school, what happened to you? I, uh, well, well, we'll back up a little bit okay. um, in high school and actually in junior high. Um, Friend of the family's got me into uh, teaching some first aid and CPR classes. First, mm -hmm. I was helping him. Um, by the eighth grade, I was a CPR instructor and was actually teaching classes at Fort Bliss, Texas, um, to the f civilians, to the military. And kind of did that wow. throughout my high school career. Yeah. Um, there was a famous TV show in those days called uh, Emergency. Well, uh, Johnny Gage and Roy DeSoto, some of the first firefighter oh, paramedics. Oh, yes, yes, um, I remember one, that. One of my favorite shows, um, I was kind of hooked. Um, I uh, graduated from high school at uh, 17 and was kind of trying to decide what I wanted to do and where I was going to go to college. Um, and uh, uh, as soon as I turned 18, I got my EMT license um, as a hobby mm -hmm. and um, uh, accidentally got hired as an EMT with the city of El Paso, uh, the then Department of EMS was separate from the fire department at the time. and. Um, here I am. I uh, kept waiting to go back to college, and uh, but the job was just too fun. I loved it too much, so uh, spent uh, four years as an EMT basic, two years as an intermediate, and now I've just hit my twenty-sixth uh, year as a licensed paramedic. Wow, that's amazing. Now that has to be uh, sometimes an exciting job, sometimes a sad job. Uh, you, during those days that you run into serious problems with a 
patient and things don't go well. Do you ever go home and just have a difficult time even unwinding? Oh, you know, absolutely. You don't, you don't survive in this job if you don't learn to deal with the stress that comes with it. Most people deal with crisis and disaster one or two days in their life. Yeah. They deal with, you know, the death of someone a, a few small times. Um, for us, that could be every day. We, we might go weeks and not have something like that, but um, you absolutely have to learn to deal with the stress, deal with the problems that come with it, and you have to go decompress. You have to learn to turn that stuff loose and move on. If, if those who don't, don't survive 30 years in this profession. Is that right? Mm -hmm. so so, what do you do to relax? Um, well, these days, and it's, it's changed over the years, but I'll tell you, these days, um, I love doing things with my kids. Mm -hmm. I have two wonderful daughters, um, and they keep me very, very busy. How old are your daughters? Yeah, they are 9 and 14, um, and are just really the center of my universe at this point. So we're, we're always doing something together. My 14-year-old uh, is taking um, driver's education, just fixing to turn 15 here in a uh, <clears throat> week or so. And um, so she and I are fixing up a... Uh, 1974 VW Bug that will be her first oh, car. Oh, yes. So. Well, you know, fathers, uh, I, I, I think daughters are absolutely wonderful. They're the pride and joy of fathers. Well, so are the sons, but the sons are in a different direction. They usually go off into space, but uh, daughters, I think they always think dad is a pretty good guy. At yep. least I've seen that through the years. Well, I, I think God blessed me with, uh, with two daughters. I'm afraid if I had sons, they'd been like me, and we probably would have butted heads. Yes, so. and I would feel the same way. <laughs> <laughs> now, your wife, so, uh, is she uh, still working, or is she? Uh, my wife is working. Um, my wife is a nurse. She actually just finished her nurse practitioner program, oh, and um, she is scheduled next week to take her national boards, and then she will be a uh, nurse practitioner working here in Carlsbad. Now, you're working where? I work for Eddy County. My title is Fire Service Coordinator. Um, I'll kind of back up how I ended up. I, yeah, I ended up a yeah. fireman by accident. Hmm. So um, my first profession was EMS. I was working as a, uh, as a paramedic. Um, I was working in the, uh, uh, back in those days, the wilds of El Paso County, most hmm. of which is now a lot more populated, inhabited, and built up upon. But I worked out in the county. Um, and uh, we had an agreement to respond with the ambulance to fires along with the volunteer fire department. So the first fire that came out, my partner and I responded in the ambulance and we got there. And uh, the fire department hadn't got there because there were volunteers. We had to wait for them to get to the station, get the truck, get to the scene. So we sat there watching, um, and that first one was a car, watching the car burn and had no fire truck or volunteers yet. Oh my! So gosh. the chief said, you know, you guys drive right past our station. How about the next time? You guys stop and bring the fire truck. We'll come straight to the scene. We'll get here quicker. So the next time was a house fire. My partner and I picked up the fire truck, and we got to the scene with the fire truck. And everyone's standing around at the guys in uniform with the fire truck watching the house burn, oh. waiting on the firemen to get there. Oh, so the chief said, we better get you guys some equipment and some training. So my partner and I both became volunteer fire department members um, and frequently would respond to the ambulance, get the fire truck, and go and start fighting fires. And that... Uh, started me into the second love of my life, which is firefighting. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I have been a certified firefighter. We uh, uh, went away to training academy, uh, got our training and certifications, and uh, that was in the mid-1980s. And mm -hmm. so I have had both my loves, EMS and firefighting. Uh, I've done both since the 1980s. Um, I was a, always a paid paramedic and a volunteer fireman until I moved to Carlsbad. Um, I spent uh, my last eight years in El Paso, I worked at the military base under Department of Defense contract, uh, working for the EMS system. And uh, as we know, uh, government contracts um, move and change and new contractors come in and there's always, you're always nervous and worried about who the next contractor is going to be. Yeah. In our case, the new contractor came in, I had uh, risen to the level of uh, general manager and the new contractor said, we're not keeping any management staff. So. You have a great resume, we'll show, you'll be great in whatever your next career is. 
So uh, yeah. I found myself at the time with uh, a uh, uh, pregnant wife, a uh, house payment, um, and unemployed. So I looked around and said, who, who needs a paramedic? And the city of Carlsbad was hiring uh, paramedic firefighters, and uh, I fit the bill. So here I came. Um, and this was going to be a temporary stop, uh, a job to uh, hold me over, and absolutely fell in love with the city. Um, and 15 years later, uh, still can't imagine raising my children anywhere else. Yeah, I, that happened to me too. I, I, the minute I stepped off the train many years ago, I fell in love with Carlsbad, and I've never regretted it. Oh, some days I complain about the heat in the summer, and some days I complain about the cold in the winter, but uh, that's about it. Now, I notice how well-dressed you are. Now, do you have to dress like this every day that you're on duty? I, I do not. This is uh, a portion of my full dress uniform. Um, I uh, generally, my, my duties vary greatly. Um, mm -hmm. So I usually wear um, uh, BDU pants and a polo shirt because I may be at my desk um, ordering fire trucks for volunteer fire department, mm -hmm. or I may be out uh, chasing a wildfire across the prairie here, or I may be um, assisting at a structure fire. Uh, they're just really hard to tell every day where my day is going to take me. So mm -hmm. um, while this this may uh, uh, look nice, and I certainly try and uh, wear my uniform where it's appropriate, um, I still see myself as a hands-on working kind of guy. Um, and uh, I love to drink coffee, and coffee and white shirts don't uh, don't get along well. You, I was, you love I, to drink coffee. I do love to drink coffee. Coffee doesn't like me. Oh. No, I have trouble. I can't sleep if I even have a wee bit of coffee. Very strange individual. Most people can just like that drop right off. Go ahead. I didn't Thanks mean that. No, you're, oh, you're fine. I, uh, I spent a number of years, of course, I, I mentioned that I came to work here at the Carlsbad Fire Department. Um, and I started there out there as a firefighter. I worked as a driver operator or engineer, as they're called. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I moved into the fire marshal's office, and I was a city fire marshal for a number of years uh, before the county came and recruited me away for the job that I'm doing now. So um, that, was, that was really a neat job. That's where a lot of people around town um, that know me, they know my face. Mm -hmm. um, they either know my face as I the, was the fire marshal that they dreaded to come see coming in for their fire inspection, or uh, Again, I've been a paramedic forever, so lots of people have seen my face in the back of ambulances or taking care of their loved ones. Yeah. So um, lots of people know me. Um, I don't think all of them know my name. Um, and it's hard for me because, uh, um, like I said, I joke about being the newcomer here, but when you didn't grow up here, for those of us who haven't been here for 30-plus years, yeah. um, we're, you know, we're still not from around here. So, um, but uh, I've loved every minute of being here. Mm -hmm. um, I did wear a nice white shirt every day okay. um, and spilt coffee on it every day. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're, you're actually working for the county. Is that your main That job? is correct. I, I work for, for the county. And where do you operate out of? We operate out of um, an office at 324 South Canyon, which is... Uh, across from skiing, kind of in the same parking lot as the main oh, county building. Oh, yeah. Um, we're in with the state parks. Um, it's the Office of Emergency Management. So, uh, my so you're technically there by that big county building where they're voting now? Is that the, That is the, correct. I that see. That is correct. Yeah. All the, the, it's kind of a complex of county buildings there. Mm -hmm. um, I, uh, this is before my time, but Guy will probably be able to tell you that it used to be Charlie's Bar, I think, is what my office used to be. Oh, I um, see. Everybody yeah. keeps telling me that. It was, it was never a bar since I've moved here, but mm -hmm. um, lots of things are what they uh, used to be in Carlsbad. That's how we remember how to get to places. Now, how do they, how do they communicate with you if it's a county problem? Uh, where does that message come from? If um, they want to come talk to me. If someone wants to find me specifically, they can call the uh, county admin building. Um, or are you talking about for an emergency? Yeah, if, if there's an emergency, where does the message well, yeah. come from? Um, all of our county volunteer fire departments are dispatched out of the central dispatch authority, uh, known as the, it's now called the Regional Emergency Dispatch Authority, ARIDA. 
Um, they're located up in Artesia. They dispatch all of our volunteer fire departments as well as the Sheriff's Department and the Artesia Police and Fire Department. So um, someone in the county calls 911, it rings into that dispatch center, and then that dispatch center will alert whatever district it is, and then um, our office um, receives those pages at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how we kind of monitor what's going on out in the county. Um, now the city fire department is are they on the same hookup or are they out of our city? The uh, city mm -hmm. uh, fire department and police department have their own dispatch center uh -huh. on the, uh, I Mermont believe, the third floor on Mermont Street. Yeah, right. That's correct. So a 911 call originating in the city of Carlsbad rings into their dispatch center and outside generally rings to the uh, combined dispatch center up in Artesia. So, so you must, they must make you hop quite a bit though with all these different areas. We, uh, um, it, most people don't realize how big Eddie County really is. Yeah. We have 11 volunteer fire departments that belong um, to the county, plus there are two village fire departments, uh, the Village of Loving, the Village of Hope. Um, we work in conjunction with them and help them with some funding and some other things. And then the two municipal fire departments in Carlsbad and Artesia. Hmm. So, um, and we uh, have agreements with them to help out. Of course, they provide our EMS service out in the county and they provide assistance uh, to fires, backing up our volunteers out in the county. So um, 15 fire departments that um, I deal with on a daily basis spread across the county. And uh, we kind of manage their budgets, Gee, make sure yes. they, try to make sure they get the equipment they need, the training they need, um, making sure they're getting the calls. and. Uh, we have a huge force of volunteers. You know, most people don't know when they call 911, they don't think that um, we have all these volunteer firemen out there that are leaving their jobs, leaving their families, getting out of bed at two o'clock in the morning, driving to the station to come to their emergency. We have over 200 volunteer firemen in Eddie County um, that are daily out handling 911 emergency calls for the citizens um, and not paid a penny for it. That's right, they don't get paid, do they? No, sir. They, they don't get paid um, and often are not appreciated nearly as much as they should. Um, oh my goodness. I, I count myself lucky because I came, I was a volunteer fireman first uh, before I was ever a paid fireman. So I came out of that world. I have tremendous respect for our volunteers. Um, I count myself lucky to work with them on a daily basis. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Well, when the end of the day comes and you're on duty, what, five days a week, six days a week, my, seven days? Well, I think they let Guy Lutman write my job description. It says, and is always on call. 24 hours a day, seven days a week is what my job description says. I see. Um, I, uh, I'm generally at the office uh, Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, mm -hmm. and then I'm available for whatever I need to be available outside those hours. Yeah. So uh, sometimes those days run into days combined and mm -hmm. um, some weekends I get to spend time with my kids. And what do you like to do besides taking care of your children? Do you like to read? Do you like to fish? Do you like to play golf? Or um, You know I own a set of golf clubs and um, every now and then I'll, I'll get out on the course because you know real golfers need a laugh too. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Tell me about it. You know I, I finally, my old, I set a rule Bob, I just had a set of rules that, you know, if, if I'm playing golf and I don't break 100, then I don't play the back nine. So I, uh, I get all my money out of the golf course. The groundskeepers hate me, but it's, uh, it's great stress relief. So I like to get out occasionally yeah. and, and play golf. Um, I like to scuba dive. Um, oh, you do? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, it's, that's interesting. Uh, here, scuba diving, here, yeah. Here in the, here in the desert, um, but uh, my time on the fire department, um, I'm, I'm a rescue diver and I've done a lot of diving in the Pecos River, which might surprise people, but uh, I have. But, well, uh, you're a rescue, you're a rescue uh, yes, sir. scuba diver. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Yes, sir. I, uh, um, I'm always looking for some new challenge, so I've, I've kind of dabbled in every piece of this business we can. Um, so I'm a rescue diver, I've done uh, high angle rescue, I've um, part-time work. I flew as a flight medic, so I've flown in hel helicopters, I've flown in airplanes. Um, I've taught for a number of years. I'm still a uh, certified paramedic instructor um, and uh, 
taught EMTs and paramedics in uh, both Texas and New Mexico. I'm really amazed at, at how neat you guys look. I mean, it's fantastic, and, and everything's just right where it should be. The badge, the collar we, uh, things, and... The fire service is tremendous, tremendous on remembering its history and its traditions. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, most people can't spell Benjamin Franklin, but every fireman knows he was a fireman. And he was the, some of the found, one of the main founders of the early fire service in the United States. Um, you know, ev everything in our uniform, everything in our tradition has a reason. It has a place that it came from. Yeah. Um, it's what holds us together. You know, they talk about the fire service being a brotherhood, but it is a brotherhood. Paid firefighter, volunteer firefighter, you know. Occasionally I have to remind some of my paid counterparts that we were all volunteer firefighters in the beginning. Yes. You know, it was a long time before there were paid fire departments. And, you know, our world is changing. It's harder and harder um, to get people to volunteer, and it's harder and harder to get businesses yeah. and places to support volunteers. So we are going to more and more paid fire departments. The training requirements, the management requirements, those things all increase as our society becomes more complex. Um, it's just a matter of time before this occurs. It, unfortunately, it is, but I still think there are chances for resurgence of volunteerism in America. Mm -hmm. um, I still believe in the volunteer firefighter. Um, I believe in the history and the tradition of our profession. You know, there's, there's a reason that we wear this, you know. This, this brass on my collar has a bugle on there, and mm -hmm. most people won't understand. It's not really a bugle, it's a speaking trumpet. It's how we used to call orders on the fire ground um, before the days of radio. Um, I think we have to keep that tradition alive. America yeah. is a country of history and tradition. Um, you talk That's about true. the similarities to military because it is um, a very paramilitary organization because it was the military people who bolstered the ranks of the firefighters throughout the years. Yeah. When you look at the, the waves of people um, after most wars, the people, the men returning from war, the women returning from war, we're looking for that organ structured, uh, respected place to go, and those people gravitated um, to our volunteer fire service. Yeah. Well, Robert, I want to thank you for being our guest today. It's been a, a real pleasure. And, uh, Bob, I, 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 I appreciate I, you letting me uh, come over here and abuse you a little bit. Uh, oh. It's not often I get to sit with a celebrity. <laughs> Wow, do I feel important all of a sudden. I'm going to have to wear, oh, I've got one, don't I? <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, all we can say on behalf of Intrepid Potash, Channel 23, and our beautiful community of Carlsbad, goodbye and good luck. Anyway, Robert.